Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing you something that I've never shown anyone unless you follow me on Instagram one time. So, this is, I know, but this is how you get views hopefully. I'm willing to sacrifice a secret to get views. So, this is a crankbait with a blade. The key to throwing this is around grass. It's better than a red rattle trap because you, you can't rip it through the grass as well, but it'll still equally catch fish. It's a little bit slower and it floats. That's a willow blade. This, the key to throwing this around grass is you gotta take off the front treble hook to put the blade on, but also change the back hook so it's smaller so you can rip it through the grass a little bit better. Throw it on about 40 pound braid. And she runs good, look at this. Even with the blade, and the best part about this thing is it floats. I'm spooking a bunch of bass right now. This, this, the key to throwing this bait is it has to run straight and that blade has to turn. And I got both of them right now killing it. Let's get started fishing the juice. This could mimic a lot of things. It could mimic a fling crawdad or a fling bait fish in dark water because that red stands out real nice. Which helps that blade because it's basically putting off vibration and double vibration and that, uh, that blade will help these fish see it. And I'm hoping with this, just that back trouble hook is they're just gonna swipe at the very bottom of it. Or if they're big enough, they'll just inhale the entire thing. All right guys, so one of the baits I love to throw that I don't throw videos is crank baits. By all means, I love cranking. Medium rod, seven foot, seven two medium rod. Anywhere from a 7 to a 7.2 with 10 pound to 8 pound test, even when I'm throwing in 20 feet of water. I love cranking. And one thing that people don't do in ponds is crank around grass. They think it's too hard. They don't want to do it. But there's one. First cast in this pond. Another little guy, but that's okay. It's the first cast in this pond with the homemade crankbait or a spinnerbait or above all a chatterbait, something that goes through the grass. There's one. Like something like that goes so easy through grass when you get through, when you have to deal with the crankbait that has such a hard time going through going through grass and I just got hit. Oh my goodness. And it's pretty key when throwing a crankbait or jerkbait, fluke, swim bait, target the areas that have <clears throat> Any times of structure, but even on daub, blah, and nothing banks, if it has wind blowing in it, that bait fish or whatever they put in there is going to be getting pushed around. And I'm fishing an inblown bank right now. Look at all this bait right here, guys. This is nothing but bait up shallow. Nothing like that video I did at Comanche era, McClure, with all that bait, but still, there's still a lot of bait here that's getting blown in with this wind. They start burning it back to get down there deeper. Oh my god, that was a giant. Oh, there's one. I just jerked it out of the grass and came over and smashed it. Literally engulfed that red crank. Wow, didn't even know I had him. Super slow. I really like super duper slow and came and hit it. Straight up knocked it. Like a base one. But I was just like I said before guys, burying your speed is key. And that fish hit it when I started really slowing it down. So might be time to start slowing this down like a swim bit. Catch one of those crank. But if they're not gonna be there's one. There we go. Just when I was saying I'd like to catch one. There we go. Little itty bitty boy. Let there's one. That's a better one. I lied. It's a little better. It's a little bit better. Just a little bit. I thought he was bigger than that. I thought he was like two pounder. But they're eating the crankadankle. 
the cranker spin. Right there in front of me. Oh my God, he's, he went on the bank. Oh my God, I watched him come out and eat it right there in front of me. Could be the biggest fish on it. There's one. He should have wrecked it. The little guy. Three for three. Quick release. Perfect. That guy's a squeaker. He's probably about 10, 10 inches, 12 inches. Got him. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yep, there we go. Shuck it off. Oh my god. So I ripped it out of the grass. Can you shake yourself off? No, nope, you are not being shaken off. Oh, that came and splashed me. All right, let's see if we can cast back over there again. But I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in for an episode of the Free Experience. Don't turn, don't, don't click the next video and it, you know, just yet. Because I may go down this bank and throw a frog. So, if this is the end of the video, it probably means I didn't catch a frog. But if you guys are seeing this, more than likely this is the last video. But if there's like another minute or two left, it is because I caught some frogfish. Or they're big enough to actually be worthy of putting in. So, I don't think you can really buy a crankbait that has a blade like this. I made this at home, and it's a bait that I throw. I have a lot of confidence in around grass and in ponds. That's why I throw it. And I haven't done a video on it because I want to keep it a secret for the longest time. But it was time to come out of the closet. Wow. I just said that. Uh, it's time to come out of the rod locker and show you guys some of my secrets. And if you guys like these videos of me showing you stuff that is abnormal, stuff that I make, or lures that you guys don't see very often that I use that I tend to call it a secret or it is a secret, just let me know. Leave comments, like, subscribe. And as always, guys, stay tuned. Hopefully, I get a frogfish. Right there, right there. I knew they were busting over there. I knew they were busting. Look at that right there, guys. I knew they were busting. Huh. They're in the middle. Oh, he didn't have it. Oh, he came. He came back twice. He came back twice to grab it. That was pretty cool. Ah, shake yourself off. Or shake it for me. Okay, too much shaking. That fish hit it once, came back and hit it twice. That fish wanted the frog, and it's still bad release on my part, but he still was willing to come eat it after that. That's why it's key to know when you got to blow up, because most times they don't come back, but you'll get those, those fish that are schooled up chasing bait, and they may come back and get it.